When you have to do some mending, turn to your sewing machine for the built-in stitch. The stitches are actually at the bottom of the practical stitch menu, stitch number 22 or 23. The difference is, is that 23 has kind of an underlay stitching that's going to go back and forth. If you have any threads that have kind of frayed out, this will help kind of contain them. But notice you have a record button. So let me show you how you actually set this up and how you can determine how long these stitches are going to sew. So if you have a rip in your fabric, I'm going to just kind of do a little snip in here and kind of fray it open. You do need to interface behind this. I'm going to just use this fabric to go ahead and give it some stability there. You want to start in the upper kind of left corner as we stitch this out. And as we sew, if we need to actually do this more than once, we can. But we're going to start stitching down and you're going to notice your needle's going to be in the left needle position. As you get past where the rip is, you're going to touch the reverse button one time. With that, you've just told the machine how many stitches forward and back it needs to travel to contain the opening you're trying to mend. And notice it's just going back and forth. The needle is moving. Can you can kind of see it's kind of in the getting close to the center needle position. It's every single needle position it is taking a new line of stitching, really reforming the fabric where the rip has occurred. So when it gets all the way to the other side, it will stop for you. So just keep your foot on the foot control. It'll lock and then we'll just go ahead and cut the thread. If again the fabric was or ripped further, you could just restart and I'd restart a couple stitches this side of where the last one was and then just go ahead and keep going. For the second mending stitch, stitch number 23, you're going to notice that when you pick it, it recommends foot 3A. So as we switch this over, that means we can actually, like a buttonhole, predetermine the length or once again, if we just know approximately how long we want it to go, it's going to start off with the serpentine stitch. That's what it's doing right now back and forth. And then when you touch the reverse button one time, then it will start to go ahead and go back and forth at each of those needle positions, starting on the left and then working over to the far right. So it's a great way to kind of, if you ever have any frayed out edges, kind of contains it and then goes back and forth. Just sew until it stops. It really looks good at the end. And once again, if your pattern is or your rip is bigger than the opening that it's currently sewing or can sew, then you can reposition and continue over. It will remember the length for you, so all you have to do is kind of move this to the side, reposition it, and start again. But this is what it will look like. You can, uh, not really, but you can, have, I was just going to say, you can sort of see the stitches underneath as it went back and forth, but you really can't. And really does a nice job, really recreates the fabric so you can't even tell you had an issue.